Hello and good morning, good afternoon, my faithful friends and followers. Welcome to this update of the inf information for the energy of the eclipses and May. My name is Evelyn. I am an astrologer and a yoga teacher and I live on the Gold Coast in Australia. Now we have a very busy month ahead of us. So let's examine some of the most potent energy influences from the astrological perspective. We also have a federal election here in Australia at the 21st of May. Given that Uranus is in Taurus and encouraging us to find better ways to use our resources, I continue the discussion about food and in particular the amount of protein we consume. And in keeping with the earthy theme, Rory Duff comes to mind with his fascinating research into the energy lines of the earth and how they affect us. Now here in Australia and the southern hemisphere at any rate, in winter we tend to spend a bit more time indoors and it is a perfect time to consider the use of essential oils. And this also aligns with a tactile Taurus energy. And to finish, I have some Easter stories. See my little Easter bunny up here. So here comes May with a new moon in Taurus and a partial solar eclipse at 6.30, more, 6 .30 uh, in the morning on Sunday, the 1st of May. Two weeks later, there's a lunar eclipse on the full moon at just past two o'clock on Monday, the 16th of May. Wow. What does all this mean? Well, I expect a change of some sort. At the new moon and the solar eclipse on May the 1st, Uranus is conjunct the sun and moon in Taurus. Now Taurus represents the earth and our environment. Uranus is the maverick planet of sudden surprises, revelations, revolutions, inspiration, disruption. Will there be a geophysical event, volcano, earthquake, polar shift? Who knows? With your own free will, maybe you can consider planting some seeds or seedlings and growing some of your own food. Or perhaps choose to purchase your food from an organic or farming source rather than the major supermarkets. Are there other innovative ideas you may have about honouring our environment? Maybe being more conscious of how you dispose of your waste products or using less power or water or create something. Be creative about how you interact with your environment. Neptune and Venus, both in Pisces, encourage us to imagine, create, Visualize new ways of being that can honor our environment and create a new and, in, and a vibrant future where there is food and shelter for everyone and people are able to embrace happiness and love as positive ways of doing life. Mars creating a supportive sextile is giving energy to our Uranian innovation. So what amazing new ideas do you have? <clears throat> two weeks later on the full moon the sun and the moon are on the nodal axis known as the axis of survival will light the sun conjunct the south node in scorpio be focused on some of the hidden atrocities occurring in our world enabling them to be exposed brought to the light this would allow the persecuted to heal and the perpetrators be brought to justice. There is optimism amongst my news sources that would like to see the trafficking of people and particularly children come to an end. The world is very evil for some folk. Saturn is squaring the nodal axis at both eclipses, forcing decisions to be made so we should have some action. And Mercury, the trickster, is going to be retrograde for three weeks from the 10th of May to the 3rd of June. So 
expect your communications and transport may be disrupted during that time. As an, as an astrologer, it's a bit like being a weather forecaster. I can indicate what the energies, like the weather, are likely to be, but we have to wait and see how our free will, what we choose to do, works with those background energies. And then in Australia, we have an election on the 21st of May. Now, I'm not one to encourage you to choose a particular party or candidate because I believe in free will. But please do your research. Check out the candidates in your electorate. Find out what they stand for. What are their policies? Who are they? Will they represent you? Can they represent you in Parliament? Ask yourself, do you want the status quo to continue? Do you want a leadership change? Do you want the potential chaos that may emerge with a hung parliament caused by the election of more independent candidates? Would chaos be preferable to the status quo? Remember that out of chaos will emerge a different order. Would that be better? than what we have. Whatever your choice, it is your choice, but please exercise your democratic right to vote and do it correctly so that your vote counts. And if you are interested in the astrology around the election, and it is quite fascinating, I suggest you read Jessica Adams' thoughts and I'll post the, uh, the link down below. So by the end of May, I expect to be in a very different energy field. Now, I want to talk about protein in the diet. And I've been banging on about this in previous uh, newsletters and blogs. Last newsletter, I discussed at length the amount of protein we consume in our diets. And specifically, I was referring to animal protein. As this feeds, this feeds nicely into a case for a vegan diet. And over the month, I read a book by Dr. Garth Davis titled Proteinaholic, in which he also argues a case for much less, preferably no, animal protein in the diet, and supports his many arguments with copious research. Interestingly, he also comments on the recommendations that many of us have heard about needing to pair two non-meat meat foods in a meal to derive the necessary protein, arguing that it is not necessary and that our bodies have enough sources from which to manufacture protein if we simply eat suitably sourced vegetables. Personally, I believe that we're omnivores and that our bodies thrive when we enjoy a variety of food in our diets. Even the Mediterranean diet, one on which many folk enjoy long, healthy lives, and which is largely fruit, vegetables, and good bread, includes a small amount of meat and fish every week. What do you think? Have you done any research into this matter? Would you adjust your diet to eat less meat? And if the answer is yes, then the month of Taurus is, the month of May is a good time to do it. And then there was this article that I read about, I uh, read by a chap called Ocean Robbins from the Baskin and Robbins family, whose father walked away from a thriving ice cream business to create a small farm growing organic food, meditating daily and practicing yoga. Robbins Sr. published a book called Diet for the New America, exploring the environmental and health consequences of the standard American diet. The media were fascinated by the story of the heir who had given up his wealth to pursue a path focused on health for all. We all have choices in life. 
Are you exercising your choices? Now, while the astrology at the moment I find very interesting, it is even more interesting to learn that there are physical manifestations that support some of this. Rory Duff, and I'll put the link down below or in the notes, is one of the leading pioneers in the world in the understanding of ley lines and earth energies and how their frequencies can be highly beneficial as well as dangerous. Rory was also the first person to rediscover the most powerful lines in the world, the emperor dragons. There are only six pairs. In his talks, he explains how and why these particular lines come and go over the centuries and the effect that this has on mankind. He's the first person to ever offer up a viable scientific hypothesis as to what these energies are and how they are generated within the earth and how this links with the universal consciousness. In an interview recorded by Pam Gregory, he discusses the fact that the magnetic shield surrounding the earth has reduced, allowing galactic energies to access the earth's atmosphere. These cosmic rays are revolutionary and can affect all life on Earth. We're also being bombarded by coronal mass ejections from the sun. Apparently in 2018, there were 26 coronal mass ejections. And this year they're expecting up to a thousand plus a spate of X-class flares from the sun because of the drop in the magnetic field around the Earth. Now, this is intended to assist the evolution of our humanity and not expected nor intended to wipe us out. Rory also reminds us that the polar points have shifted towards each other. Now, the North and South Poles have shifted before, and it is possible that this can happen again. Will it happen in our lifetime? Maybe. Rory seems to think that it's possible 50 to 60 years from now. Edgar Cayce, nearly 100 years ago, mentioned the probability of a polar shift also. Should we be scared? I would say no. If it happens, go with the flow. It may be dark and turbulent for a few days, but life will eventually rebalance. And if we transition? It's our time. Recently, I read a lovely article in my online copy of Wellbeing magazine about the value of essential oils in our daily lives. I love using lavender oil to calm the mind, especially when I have trouble falling asleep. And I've used it successfully to treat burns, putting glad wrap over the burns. Lemon oil I have used successfully to rid my toes of a nasty dry fungus. But lemon oil also is good if dropped on the cloth with which you wipe out the fridge. Keeps the fridge smelling fresh. Tea tree oil I have found is a great standby as a disinfectant. And in the car I have a diffuser in which I put some rosemary oil and it provides a beautiful, pleasant, a slightly astringent fragrance. Sometimes I have ants in my kitchen and I use peppermint oil or fennel oil to chase them away. I simply put a few drops on some paper towel and run it across the ant pathways. In a few minutes, hey presto, they're all gone and I've not had to spray any nasty chemicals in my house. My preference is for doTERRA oils, but young living oils are also good. I love being able to use natural products in preference to anything manufactured in a chemist laboratory. How about you? Now I had an interesting Easter this year, enjoying celebrations on two consecutive weekends. My grandsons were thrilled to bits. 
to witness the Easter bunny on the back of a ute while his friend passed out eggs to the children. Well done, Glenn and Andrea at Riverview Caravan Park for making Easter fun for little people. The following week, I went with my Greek neighbor to celebrate Easter with the Greek community. And after an interesting multi-language service, lamb on a spit with rice and potatoes and Greek salad was simply delicious. And then we all got to dance. Great fun. Thanks, Alex. Now, Taurus energy is all about the physical senses. So organizing a full body massage would be a beautiful experience. In all of this chaos, remember it is easy to feel anxious or scared. So I encourage you to remember to breathe deeply. Take time out every day to meditate and exercise regularly. Move it or lose it. Have a great month until next new moon. Bye for now.